Hi guys, and welcome to Bankham Dross. Uh, what was that? Was that an attempt of a heart? I think it was. Wow, good start. Welcome back, you guys. Um, first of all, sorry for not posting more videos. I've been insanely busy doing my freelance work, but also gotten a real art job um, as a concept artist at a game studio. So that's pretty great. But that doesn't mean that I should neglect you guys. Um, and especially not now, because recently I've been putting a, a brush set for Procreate up on my Etsy store. And I've been very good at explaining how these brushes are, are put to use in the little download PDF that I have uploaded with my uh, brushes. But I would still like to make a YouTube video where I explain how I use them and for what purpose because I think it gives a nice impression of, of how they're to be used and maybe they can give inspiration as to how you could further develop them. So if you're here right now, maybe you have downloaded the brushes or you've seen me do some commercials of it and welcome to you guys and thank you so much for supporting me and I hope that you like this video. Let's get started. So we remove all of this Nifty little trick when you undo, two fingers, press down, you undo. Very easy. My first brush in this uh, Linus Digital Drawing Brush set is the Construction Pencil. This one I have created and modified from, I think it was this one, the 6B Pencil, the original one, modified it a bit so it became a bit more rustic and a bit more rough in its flow. What I like to do with the construction pencil kind of lies in the name. I like to use it for constructing. So it's basically my base layer of my drawing. Usually I like to put it in a light blue because then I can set it apart easily. When, uh, when I have my first layer, we can rename this to construction, like so. And it will just be easier to tell it apart from the other lines that we're going to use. So let's see, what should we draw? I think I'm going to put this pretty high up because I'm going to draw something quite rough. And I think maybe... What about a frog? I really like drawing frogs. What if we have a frog here with a big mouth? it has this little detail in the mouth we have perhaps some nostrils right there some big eyes we have the feet and should we give it like a big glob right here? Glob? Did I just invent a, a word? I think I did. I don't know what this is called on a frog. I know it's where this it the sound comes from. I, I think. Does this look like a frog? Can you sort of tell this is the mouth right here? Maybe it was a bit exaggerated. But as you can see, I use the construction pencil just for for pinpointing the first lines of uh, of my drawing. I'm not taking this stage too seriously. So if I do something wrong, I mean, it's going to be okay. Let's say we work with this character. Okay, so what I usually do from here is I put this layer down in opacity so I don't get so confused when I work on the other layer with the different lines. And here in my brush set, you can go in a couple of directions. You can use the ink sketch, which is a pencil that uh, I made when I was drawing my Inktober. And it's um, it has a bit of a sketchy look to it. So you can see here in the line, maybe if I zoom in a little bit better, you can see it's still quite rough. 
but if I pull it lighter or if I press it, it doesn't really do anything with the opacity, just like ink wouldn't do anything with that. It's not that forgiving working with ink, so it has the same feel to it in a way. So if I try to work with that a little, like I would do on my Inktober, I try to to draw in some some more detailed lines this time. What you can do with this pencil is you can actually go in here and you can pull up the streamline. And if you do that, oh, I love this feature about Procreate that you can just twist and turn the paper. I'm sorry, if you do that, um, you can see it has a cleaner line flow and it's delayed a little bit and drags better. But that means that if you do quick sketching, uh, it won't get those sharp edges. So it depends on how big you, or not how big, how fast you draw. And I kind of like uh, working fast, but sometimes when you do these bigger uh, strokes, it can be nice to See there, it wouldn't work, but it can be nice to have a bit more control over uh, over your process. So yeah, that's how I use my my ink brush. But let's just finish him. Sorry if this video is a bit slow for you guys, but I want to do it properly and and let you know how how it can be done. Here I would probably turn it way back down and do a little bit fast sketching. This is what I like most about the ink look, is that you have these graphic novel shading uh, looks to it. So yeah, there we have uh, the frog. Maybe we have a little fly that's on its way into its mouth. I don't know. Um, but let's just pick this part because we're going to use this construction layer again for another pencil. The next pencil we have is actually this called Extra Fine Line. Um, but I will get back to that because we're still on the uh, line layer. So let's go to the next line that I like to use. These two are actually quite similar. If we just compare them, now it's a bit big. And then we have this called line detail rough. Maybe it's a bit misleading calling it rough because it's not really rougher. It's just a little bit darker and it has a little bit more texture to it. I was kind of like when I made these brushes, should I put them in because they're so alive? Will people tell the difference? But I mean, it's in my brush set and you're getting what I'm working with. So there you go. I like working with this uh, the best and not to chew my own horn, but guys, I am actually proud of this brush. I rarely say that, um, but, but I am. And I had been modifying it over and over again over a long, long time. All of these 17 brushes are brushes that I've been working with for ages and the reason that I've only put them up now is because I've been modifying them on and off and I wanted them to be perfect. But this one, I think it's so good, at least for my my style of drawing. It's, it's kind of light, even though I had it, have it on the full black. So you have to sort of, you know, pull over the line a couple of times in order to get to get that feeling of, uh, of of blackness to it but that's how I like to work so that means that when you're working with this line you kind of have to work it in a little it 
and that gives it for me a really sketchy look that I absolutely love the more you can keep from that sketchy look the the better I think anyways so here we have his his big mouth Sorry if my hand is kind of getting in the way. I was wondering how should I record this? Should I uh, should I just do a screen recording or should I do it by this? Maybe you've noticed that the camera moves a little bit when uh, when I draw like that, so my setup is far from perfect. But I think I enjoy the tutorials the most where you have uh, the the hand visible and and you can sort of see. Uh, the pen moving and everything but I suppose that that could could be a little bit different from from person to person but you can see it has a very smooth smooth look um, and there is another thing about this uh, brush that I find absolutely amazing just keeping it very loose here and I will get to the amazingness feature so right when you think you're done with this brush you're actually mistaken because what you can do is you can turn up the size and it works really good as a sort of water-based acrylic and that is really good for for working in some uh, some shades in the character. And you can also use this ability for um, for coloring. So if you pick a color and put on, you can you can work with that as well, but I would recommend that you do that on on a different layer. But I just think that is a really cool uh, cool trait of this brush that it's uh, how do you say that? You can use it for several things. I'm sure there's a fancy word for, for when you can do that. Multiple purposes. Let's just say that's the word I'm looking for. You can see the shape of it here. Kind of like a moon. It adds again like a little bit of texture. But yeah, I really, really like that brush. And I've done some, some pretty cool, cool things with it. So if we take that up there, this brush would give you kind of the same feel. So I won't go through that. But as for the extra fine detail, that kind of, you know, it's in the word what it does. And I will use that to sort of refine the line art. I will also maybe sometimes wait uh, with this until I'm at the final stage and I will go back and show you that again but, but for that I need some color. But here you can see it's quite thin. Let's say we want some some wee hairs on this. We want some details on the tongue. Let's really see that. So that's basically what I would use it for. All right, so the final line art um, pen or brush that I have is this one called Line Soft Detail. And this one is also really, really good. And it's good for creating that softer, cleaner look. So if we go back to our character here, we have a new layer like that. Maybe you can tell that the line is very, very, very soft. That is also really good for for rendering the line afterwards. Sometimes when you're doing um, a painting, you might want to work with the line uh, a little bit more after. And then it's useful that it's 
that it's softer and doesn't have so many edges to it. Let's see. Yeah, I can could kind of feel the streamline being up on that one. We don't really need that so much now. So yeah, now we kind of tired of drawing in this rock, so I will do it a little quickly, but you kind of get the gist of this brush. Let's just leave it at that. And we can pull it down here. Oh, remember when you press uh, uniform down here, you don't mess with, uh, with the shape of it if you put it in free form you kind of accidentally do stuff like that. So remember to keep that in mind when you move around the pieces. Those were the line uh, brushes that I, that I have. And as I said before, I get by so good with these brushes. And sometimes I will actually use my construction pencil both for the construction layer and also for the line art on top of it. Then I just change it into black or I resize it just to give you an impression of that. This is a drawing where my construction pencil kind of merged into the final line art. Uh, so sometimes you can do that if you want a more sketchy pencil look. But usually I work with this line. So this is also kind of a line art pencil. But the reason that I don't present it as a, a line art brush for me is because I think it as more of what it actually says, a form of, uh, of studio pen that I use for line art, of course, but for drawing manga and stuff. And for me, it's not a go-to line art pencil unless I'm drawing something uh, very, very clean, and I rarely do. But the best way to show you how I use it, if I go through... Here we have a fun little sort of joke that I made, a merge between Pokemon and Game of Thrones. And this is where I use the Studio Pen, which by the way is also a version of the original Studio Pen that I modified. It has a very clean look, and it's super cool for drawing manga and and graphic novels and stuff like that. So I, I would highly recommend uh, using it for that. But as I said, I rarely use it. Oh, here is my uh, my little picture I made for my brush set, which some of you maybe recognize. Let's go back to our presentation paper right here. I can just very quickly show you how it's how it's done. Again, working with this. Keep the streamline high up. And then just very slowly go through the drawing. This is not really my style of drawing. It's way too, what do you say, calculated? Not that I don't think it can look good or anything, but it's a little bit, yeah, it's not really me. But I put the brush in there because maybe it's good for someone. Then we have our block in color. And you don't have to use this brush just for blocking in, but it is really good for that purpose. And the reason that I have these two is maybe if you're doing um, a very broad uh, base, I think we're going to take this guy because he's the one that we developed the most. Make sure you put the line art layer on top of the blocking color and then pick a blocking color that is maybe somewhat close to what you want to draw in, which is something you notice. Maybe you will draw it over. So if you want to draw like a big base, you use the blocking color that doesn't react to pressure sensitivity. I like using this one because when I press it hard, it becomes bigger and when I press it lightly, I can sort of get in the different nooks of the character. So we're not gonna 
be super careful right now because this is just a tutorial. Normally this uh, stage of uh, the drawing can take a while because you really want a clean look. Sorry if I'm blocking the table and pushing the camera. I hope it doesn't affect the video too much. So there, we have something we can kind of work with there. Now, this stage is really interesting. And it will take me through a lot of these other brushes. What I usually do is that I create a new layer on top of the blocking color and then a clipping mask. That means that when you draw on this layer, you won't be drawing outside the blocking color, which is really useful. So now I can use some of my painting brushes to paint in. If I pick this painting brush, which I adore, um, I can get a bit of a rough look. Like you can sort of tell that it's a bit like, uh, like an acrylic rough pencil that you've been using a lot of times. But I kind of like the the texture that it gives. You can maybe draw me some, some shadows like this. We also want him to have sort of like a big red mouth. Like so. And we want a really dark tongue, I think would be great here. Danger about using this brush when coloring is that you can get a, like a little bit of holes in it. But again, I like that sketchy look. So, so that depends on, on your style. Let's put a little bit of highlight on this one. Normally, I won't draw in highlights at uh, this stage. I would first make a base layer with a. Uh, a shadow and a highlight and then I would put a layer on top of that with overlay mode and then color but for this we want to draw a little bit quickly so so this is not going to be a tutorial over my entire digital painting process but more an introduction to these brushes which you probably already picked up on you could also use this brush this gives a more rounded look, like you can see it's a bit, let's just make a new layer, it's a bit cleaner without all that roughness of the other brush. This paintbrush detail, I think um, it's kind of like uh, a water acrylic. And it's really good for, for paint, painting in those uh, smaller details because maybe you want to mix up the texture a little bit. So let's say we keep, we draw these spots in right here. I'm very aware that I'm on another layer right now without clipping mask. So let's fix that. Maybe we want his, his feet to be a little redder, also on his knees right there. So give in like a little bit of extra texture. Maybe we want his eyes to be yellow actually. Cool. Then we have the airbrush uh, uh, brushes right here. We have two. Once again, it's light with the blocking color. This one would be the equivalent of this with no reaction to uh, pressure sensitivity. And this has a reaction. The reason that... Oh no, is this now? We're running out of power. Sorry guys. 
The Life of an Artist. And we're back in business. Okay, as I said, um, the difference between those two are really, really important because this is really good at drawing in a very broad light. So if we again make a new layer, go into Clipping Mask, and we put this in, let's say, actually we're going to put it in Multiplied. And then we're going to draw in a shadow over it. Let's just pick blue. We like blue. And we put the opacity down. We create a mask, like so. And then we take the broad airbrush. Remember, this one. And we make it a little bit big. And we draw in like a very subtle light over him. Like this. And now maybe we want some more detailed lighting. And this one is perfect for that. A little bit smaller reacts to pressure. So we want something around the eyes. A bit more around the mouth. You can make it a little bit if you want to. Some of the lighting will hit the tongue. Like that. The eye. The knee. The lip. Maybe not that much. And the stomach right here. So see? That brush is really good for, for those lighting details. But there is another use of these brushes that is really amazing. But I can only show you that if I go and make an entire new drawing. And now you're probably thinking, oh, that's going to take too long. But I have a trick. If we go and pick this brush, this is just an example. We have a little window here. I'm going to draw a C bottom. So we say this is the bottom. We actually want like a little more. Right on this. And we have the surface right here. And we're going to smudge that out just a little bit like that. So that is our frame, right? What you can do with uh, these brushes is that you can draw in light beams. So if we have this base layer, we go in again and we make a clipping mask. We put this in overlay mode and we pick the color of the light that we want shining in. And I just want to keep it in blue. Like so and I take the broad airbrush first and then I draw in some light beams maybe just to add a little life to the picture we draw in some some bubbles right here so we can tell we're underwater and we're on the right now we're supposed to be that layer again this is the one that has properties of the detail brush. If you can kind of tell that I'm, I'm drawing in some more refined rays. And these brushes just works perfectly for this purpose. And actually it's good that we have this picture going right now because it's going to make, make it easier for me to show you these last brushes. And these are kind of like my element brushes. And don't be fooled by the name just because I write uh, foliage or snow freckles, spots and leaves doesn't mean that you have to use it for this. These leaves could just be as easily just texture on the bottom of uh, the ocean right here. See? In fact, maybe you can't see because it's too far away. So maybe you can sense it right now. Or we could take this footage and we could actually make some, some seaweed. 
and actually use it like a brush and then if we make it bigger you can see then it becomes the foliage like that and then we could maybe even add a little bit of highlight to it so we can sense it a little bit better let it see we're coming up from the bottom right here and the snow freckles spots yes it can be freckles we can go back to we can go back to the frog here and we can pick color that we want to work with there's our frog and we can draw in some freckles on that or we could use it on this picture to create dust particles in the water that sounds weird having dust in the water of course it wasn't be wouldn't be that it would rather be more like specks or something let's see if we cannot do that let's keep that blue again like so so you can see we kind of had where the the lighting hits we have these details in the water and that looks really cool and also you can use it in the foreground as well and then you take them really high up and you've probably noticed this in pictures if things are in the foreground it's a little bit blurry you can even emphasize the blur if you want to So you can just kind of tell that there are a couple of specks in it. So yeah, that was my little tutorial over these uh, brushes. I hope it gives you a little bit of inspiration as of how to go about them. You don't have to use them like I do, um, but you could start from there and then you could find your own method. Maybe you even want to go into the brushes and you want to twist and turn them a little bit, but I think they're a really good set uh, from where to start your base drawing. It has everything that you need in order to construct um, some finished artwork. Just to give a quick example, uh, this uh, troll right here is created just by using those brushes. And I got some fairly good details in and I'm really glad about the result. I also use them to create bigger paintings with backgrounds sort of like this one this painting i mean i i kid you not it looks so super sophisticated um and and in some ways it is um there's a lot of of very like teeny tiny details on it and i created this picture almost just by the use of this brush so there really is no limit you guys but thank you so much for watching and if you haven't uh, downloaded my brushes and still found this video interesting and you're now feeling like you want to modify your own brushes then click on this link where I talk about how to modify your own brush it, brushes it does take a little bit of time but if you're up for it I highly recommend doing it if not go to uh, the link for my Etsy store in the description of this video and knock yourself out. I put them for sale very cheap because I know we're all on a budget. But yeah, thanks for watching. Uh, give a like and subscribe if you want to and have a very nice artistic day. Bye.